the one and only candidate that we trust to uphold the Constitution of the United States, the one and only candidate that has a plan to actually reduce the size of the federal government, balance the budget, and reduce the deficit. He is truly the one and only candidate that deserves to be the next president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored, privileged, and humbled to introduce to you the one and only Ron Paul. Thanks for inviting me to your revolution. <laughs> the issues are alive and well. The spirit is alive and well. Matter of fact, not only is it alive and well, it's growing by leaps and bounds. <laughs> it, it, it's been a tough struggle, but it, we will become noticed because what is we have in Washington today, it's not working, it's failing, and they have to come our way. They have to look to the ideas of liberty to bring this country out of the doldrums. And I predict that's what's going to happen. But there's something different going on right now. And it started about four years ago. I think what's happened is the recognition by just about everybody in this country, there's something seriously flawed with the government that we have today and we have to change it. That's what I think's happened. For a long time, the only thing that we've ever been offered is just tinkering with the edges, tinkering with the status quo, manage it this way. It's never, should we be managing things? Should we be in these wars? Should they be attacking our civil liberties? It's always, if you elect me, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to manage things differently. What we need is a lot less government management of our lives and a lot more individuals running their own lives. <laughs> You know, you hear so often other candidates running for the president, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. The, tra the, the one thing, though, is that I'm convinced if you're a constitutional president, you really can't say that because the president is not supposed to be a king. He's not supposed to go to war on his own. He's supposed to only go to war when the people endorse the war and the Congress votes for it. The president can't do it on his own. And the president certainly shouldn't get the authority from some to somebody outside this country, like the United Nations or NATO. They don't have the authority to tell us when to go to war. But no, uh, a president can't and shouldn't even try to run the world. I mean, we have enough job trying to run our own personal lives, so we shouldn't pretend we know how to, what to tell other people to do. A president shouldn't assume to run your lives. It's your life. You should run your life as you please. If you make mistakes, they're your mistakes. If you're successful, you should reap the benefits of your success and not have the government take away from you. But in, in a free society, when you have property rights and contracts rights and sound money, the government has a responsibility to make sure that environment is correct, that, the, that you do have freedom and, and, uh, and, and this acceptance of property rights. But if you don't have that and, and uh, you can't expect a president to come in and say, under the conditions of inter economic intervention to run the economy, that it's only a decision that you argue, I can run the economy better this guy, I can run the economy better. The the president can't run the economy, the people have to run the economy, and you have to have your freedom back. Good idea. Uh, a very good idea. 